talking about Forest, you can see Marky opted for the Purify spell because of how much CC is in the composition of Onyx Esports, and that actually might be a problem later on. Well, there you go. A little bit of a contest already early on. Lethal Wanderer is secured by Kyrie, and for Max, he is going to have a tougher time in his jungle up against the Karina in terms of wave clear. The clear defense is going to be the main issue here because Kyrie, well, they both have the Demon Slayer, but in that mid side, that's key almost getting pulled back. The combo between the Atlas and the Firemist is going to be so scary to deal with later on. In the top side, though, we can see that with the Inspire, CW was able to make a play and get a bit of an advantage against Marky here, who's already used the Purify as well. Ooh, he has to be careful, though. Already some setups coming in from Onyx Esports, trying to disrupt Max's farming pattern as well. And it's starting to show, perhaps. We'll see what happens as it is still 20 seconds to the Lord. Both teams have a lot of time to set up as the emphasis right now is in that top side. With the Cho and the EXP lane, it really feels like it's like a tr throwback situation here because we've seen that we can see that, you know, the Cho will, uh, boots on the Cho will be able to be so proactive in trying to go for those big flanks. Yeah, you can see as well in that top side, right? CW knows the risk of getting ganked in the gold lane. He knows that he is the losing lane currently for on an eSports, so he needs to play it very safe. Meanwhile, down below, Moreno has the Black Shoes, gets the level up in time with the Black Shoes, able to back away for now, but Boots jumps in with the help of Kyrie to pick up first blood. Numenon Blast connecting all the three members, but the damage isn't Whoa. enough, and Boots is able to use the way the Dragon Flicker to bring Cerezo under the turret. Keyboy gets the Fatal Links onto Key. No Flicker available, a solo kill up top, but BTR lose three members in the second minute of the game. And we can see here the Talents prediction by Axe. Also very different though. I changed into Onik. I think they have more things to play around with, like you can see on screen. Ooh. <laughs> Speaking oh. about that though, they tried different things, but Onik Esports are still on top right now. And that crowd control difference, man, they completely abuse it in the bottom lane. Again and again, Sigata Alpha tries to maneuver around a, a particular crowd control, but Onik Esports comes back with another one. So. Right now, when it comes to those skirmishes, Onyx Esports for sure have the advantage. I think Bigatron needed to try and match Onyx Esports with that damage output, the same way Onyx did in game number one. Oh, CW needs to be careful though. Keyboy jumps in as well. Purify is ready there. He goes over Fatal Lanes. Demon on Blast popped in. Keyboy going to be stunned up there as Marky is able to get out with the Purify. Drion caught, still able to flicker out. BTR and Onyx Esports both disengage, but BTR are able to win out in the top side skirmish. Meanwhile, Purple Buff contests for Max, going for the Retri battle against Kyrie, And it is Max who actually wins out the Retri battle because Kyrie was on cooldown. Exactly. And now with that advantage, Bigatron, they are pressuring the gold lane immensely right here. Marky almost taking down that turret, and the fight seems to be breaking out a bit. But of course, with the purifies, they have ways, methods to outplay Keyboys in uh, engage. So he needs to be a bit more unex unex unexpected, unpredictable with that fatal links. You need to be thinking about this really well, right? I agree with you. Because of how Bigtron Alpha have a lot of good disengages, they need to look for a way to perhaps bait the purifies from coming down. Because from the side of Onyx Esports, they have a lot of CC. And when we're talking about CC, Keyboy actually gets taken down in a 4v1 situation. That's unfortunate for him, man. We know this again and again. If the engage is too scary for you, maybe we can burst down the engage tool. So, Bigger and Alpha goes with the obvious counter. They take Keyboy out of the equation right here, and they have a bit of control, and they are so dominant in that gold lane. So, CW is in a bit of trouble. But of course, in that late game, he will have the opportunity to try and make those big outplays happen. Now, with the turtle spawning, though, on the esports, they're a bit on the back foot, because five members of Bigatron Alpha already ready for a fight. Oh, Marky, very aggressive onto the back line of Onyx Esports currently, as they are going to be able to zone Onyx Esports away. DTR picking up the second turtle of the game and building their gold lead now. All, again, because of Marky's lane. He was the winning side, and BTR were playing around it. Keyboy goes in for a perfect match, not really able to find anyone, and BTR are just forcing the take onto the tier one turret, getting it, and again, pushing themselves even further in terms of that gold lead. You can feel it actually start to build in terms of that map control as well. Onyx Esports, they need to wait for that one beautiful moment by Keyboy to be able to turn this back around. And, it, that, and this can happen, right? Because both teams are starting to group up as five, looking for the neutral objective control. 
and that might just be what exactly he needs. But once again, Key does still have that disengage potential with his Numenon Blast. So it comes back down to the timing from both of these teams. I think that Numenon Blast counter engage is a huge threat for Onyx Esports because right now it seems like in pure skirmishes, Bigotron Alpha definitely have the advantage, and Onyx Esports require a combo, uh, some kind of like AOE perfect timing situation to try and get an advantage. Kyrie, as we can see from the item builds here, going for a tank build as well. So in the mid game, there's going to be a lot more power on the side of Onyx Esports, but of course, Bigotron Alpha with an Aerithal, with a Lilia and an Esmeralda, their mid game isn't that bad either. Pretty solid again. In terms of the itemization as well, right? I, I like how Kyrie is building. He's going for just magic defense purely because he knows that he can soak in that physical damage from his first ability. Max though, securing the Berserker's Fury with the Wind Talker. CW is in a lot of threat in these team fights now. He doesn't have the wind of nature yet. And for Max, it's gonna be so easy to burst them down. Bottom side though, boots. Not going to be able to actually defend this turret. It's another turret take for BTR. Yeah. But remember, on Esports, they're used to be put, it, put in a position where they're behind, right? It only takes one moment, one mistake from Bigatron Alpha for this to turn back around. So for Bigatron Alpha, they need to keep it this way. They need to stay disciplined, stay on that pressure, as now it's going to be the contest for the next turtle. Falling Star Moon used, Cerezo zoning Kyrie away as Max goes in, but look at that! Max still able to find the Retribution on to the turtle, securing this, the third and final turtle for Bigatron Alpha. 2-1 in terms of that neutral objective right now. BTR still grasping onto that gold lead. Still maintaining a healthy lead. 3k right now. On the esports are still trying to find ways to try and catch up, but overall, Bigatron Alpha, they're just way too scary. You can see that anyone who mispositions, there's just so much damage available for Bigatron Alpha to punish with, and that is the main difference. They are playing how Onyx is playing in game number one, and that will be Keyboy taking out yet again the battle for vision and control. Bigatron Alpha is ruthless. I mean, it's difficult, right? Because that's exactly what Keyboy was meant to do. He's meant to go and look and open the open vision for his team as well as look for moments. But every time he does that, he instantly gets punished by the damage coming in from Bigatron Alpha. And this is Marky on a Purify, not on the battle spell like CW. Right. So later on, when the fights get more sporadic, when there's more priority in taking out that gold lane, Marky will have an advantage over CW just because he has an extra get out of jail free card. For now though, consider damage dealt by X, Marky just unforgivingly dashing out again and again a lot of damage. And Sorizo not far oh. behind as the Lumen Blast gets charged up. And you can see here, fight is not gonna be it's not gonna begin, I think. Yeah, they're using that contest actually to convert and to translate over to an objective up top where Marky has just been farming up a storm. One level lead against CW. I'm very curious to see just the individual lead that Marky has on CW on this Irithel. Because the later the game goes, it's gonna be tougher for Onyx Esports to actually look for the play onto the Irithel. That Purify adds so much uh, peel for himself. I think damage output is just going to be so solid as well, and we haven't seen a lot of crazy cult altar plays coming in from Onyx Esports, so it's a very difficult situation, but they are preparing a trap here. It might just pay out. Marky, got to be careful, has the Purify, but look at it collapse right now. Keyboy jumps in with the fatal lace. Marky's still able to fade out. He's able to dash away. Kyrie goes in under the turret, finding a kill, but in the end, he will lose out on his life. The shot called by Onyx to jump onto Marky ends up with four members getting taken down. BTR instantly convert onto the Lord, and it's a disaster for Onyx Esports. Weird collapse by Onyx Esports. They know that Marky is still going to be able to maneuver around that, and the counter engage once again from Key was the main reason, because they couldn't have followed up onto anything after that happened. 4-0 to zero trade, a Lord already in the hands of Bigatron Alpha, and now a 6,000 gold lead as we're going to go into the instant replay presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series. Everyone going at the same time towards Marky, and finally, Kyrie is able to take him out, but with a Purify, he's able to just buy so much time, and fighting under the tower when you're at a gold disadvantage against Bigatron Alpha, who has a lot of DPS, a lot of AoE as well. Not the right call, they trade 1 for 4 right there. That is very unfortunate. But you can see that Onyx Esports are just trying things out. We cannot win team fights. Let's try and make sure that Marky gets taken out. It didn't pay off, but it shows that Onyx Esports, they're still, I don't know, trying to find 
a, a solution that works here that can solve the problem they're facing, which is Bigotron Alpha and the insane amount of damage output they have in that composition. How many times are they going to be able to do that, though? Because at this rate, already 8,000 gold difference. It might be too difficult for Auto Esports to turn this back around. The Lord already marching in that top side. Bigotron Alpha has really good Siege potential, and we'll see the defense coming in from Onyx Esports. Numenon Blast already popped in. Kyrie gonna be caught in the Numenon Blast. Still, though, no more damage to follow it up. Base turrets taken low in the top side, but not much more. Onyx Esports still able to defend for now. First Lord value still very, very <laughs> good for BTR, as they are able to wipe the tier 2 turrets entirely from every single lane. They're in a tough spot because now they like the pickoff potential because both Marino and Marky have to purify. So it's just a very smart decision to go with that. It's a very clear counter to the Atlas. And without the possibility to pick them up, if, if they go for a front to back situation, they don't have the damage potential to try and deal with it. Because Marky and Marino, they both essentially do AoE as well. And it's two different types of damage on the side of Onyx Esports. Essentially, their main DPS tool is CW. There's not really a lot of magical DPS coming in. So they, they don't win in the short burst. They don't win in, uh, they don't win in the prolonged drawn out fights either. So Onyx Esports have no answer right now. On screen, we saw Max on the link. And currently, he's actually two levels above Kyrie. So not a great place for Kyrie right now as Bigatron Alpha once again with the map control. Just really dis destroying Onyx Esports at this point, right? Because if they're relying heavily on the pickoff potential coming in from Kyrie, we see time and time again that Numeron Blast being a really huge stone in his way. Oh. Here the Sheesh coming in from the audience here. <laughs> Great use of emotes. Get, yours, uh, get your emotes as well in the shop right now for a limited time. But you can see that Marky is finishing up his final item here only at 12 minutes, well, 12 and a half minutes, as well as Max. So it's going to be more and more difficult. But of course, once Bigatron Alpha max out on the item difference, on the gold difference, on the Esports has a chance to try and catch up. But of course, Bigatron, I think, has different plans in store for on the Esports. No, for sure. You know, BTR are right now manipulating the waves pretty well, right? To set up for the objective take. With Kyrie being one level down, he is going to be put on, in a disadvantage in the retry battles up against Max. But it's all going to come down to, again, set up. Onyx Esports needs to find a way for Kyrie to actually enter into that Lord Pit. Because if this continues to happen here, the zoning, no, Kyrie's going to be caught by the Falling Star. Moon Blast as well popped in. He not going to be using the Flicker just yet. Cold Ultra placed in. Onyx Esports lose out on a very, very important resource right before the fight even happens here. Concealed Play pops in once again. Fatal Whoa! links on the three members. The Moreno is able to bop away with the Black Shoes. The damage comes through once again. CW with the crossbow tank deals no damage. Falling Star Moon comes over. Picking up a double kill. Boots is able to find the way the Dragon onto Marky, but a key comes in with the stun. Boots taken low. BTR lose Max, but it's done. They are able able to get a 3 for 1. At least they're able to buy some time for Onyx Esports as well before being able to get that Lord. It's so difficult, right? So 5v5, Onyx Esports, they're gonna lose out on the trade. So what exactly can they do here, Rashi? How can they win this? Do they split up? Do they just continue with this 5v5 or do they try to for trade? They go for the same exact thing because right now Marky and Marino do not have to purify. Unfortunately for them, Vicky and Alpha, they know that. They want to make sure that this Lord gets taken out right here, right now. He delays everyone and without five members available, Bigot and Alpha will be able to take that Lord and back away. There is still a small window here where Onyx Esports can try and take advantage of the purifies being on cooldown. But of course, Bigatron will wait for those battle spells to be up again before going for the next fight. So it's just so difficult, man. The Purify is literally what is shutting down Onyx Esports right now. Because when you have an advantage, it's all about Onyx Esports trying to force Bigatron Alpha into mistakes, right? But with the Purify, it just denies the possibility of them to do so. Did you guys notice something? What? Literally no towers from Bigatron has fallen in this game. Perfect game so far. Wow. And that just shows again, right? BTR, they're definitely still in this to win it. Even though they were dominant in game number one, BTR are looking for a comeback victory here. Maybe possibly reverse sweeping. Whoa, Max jumps in there. 
picking up the base turret as it was very, very low. Now BTR look towards the mid lane. Boots able to zone for now. Now when the blast comes in though, he has the flicker. He doesn't pop it just yet. Cold Ultra placed in. Drian able to bring Marky back onto the team, but the Cold Ultra was popped in. Boots in the midst of it all goes in for the Kundo. The Fatal Link's connecting onto three members, but Max is able to dash away with his Defiant Blade. Oh. They go for the base and they force a third game in this series up against number one in the standings. The team that we thought was unbeatable have been taken to the third game.